Welcome to the Queens County School Board for September 7th, 2022. Can we stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. I motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Have it. I've had a chance to look at the closed session meetings for August 17th. I make a motion, sir, to approve the uh, closed session minutes for August 17th, 2022. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Have it. We've had a chance to look at the open sessions for August 17th. Mr. Smith, I make a motion to approve the minutes of August 17th, 2022's open session. Second. A motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to start off, I'd like to introduce our two new student board members, uh, Mikai Johnson from Kell Island High School. Welcome. Mr. Austin Tool from Queen Anne's County High School. Thank you. And thank you. Welcome aboard, guys. Hey, we have awards and presentations. Same yes, way. our first award is Project Lead the Way uh, Outstanding Teacher Award. And I'd like to invite up Mr. Tolly to take the mic, and he's going to kind of take the lead, but we're going to come down there and join him. Good evening, everyone. My name is Adam Tolley. I am the CTE uh, supervisor and social studies supervisor here at Queen Anne's County. And tonight, it is my distinct pleasure to be here to recognize and congratulate our very own Mr. Rocco Barletta for his achievement of being selected as the 2022-2023 Project Lead the Way National Teacher of the Year. coming up just a couple of, of uh, very good facts and, and uh, tidbits here about Mr. Barletta. Mr. Barletta is uh, a Project Lead the Way master teacher. He is a Project Lead the Way facilitator, team leader at Stevensville Middle School, Project Lead the Way gateway teacher for Queen Anne's County Public Schools, robotics club coach, power school trainer, lead teacher, sit and faculty advisory member, youth baseball coach, and high school baseball and golf coach. So not only is Mr. Barletta very involved in our school system, very involved in our county, uh, we are just very fortunate to have him. And just quickly, a couple of facts about Project Lead the Way. Project Lead the Way started in 1997 with uh, participation in only 12 schools in New York. Today, they have grown to over 12,000 schools and they have trained over 83,000 teachers. So for Mr. Barletta to be recognized as the sole national uh, gateway teacher of the year is an exceptional award and achievement to say the least. So Mr. Barletta, we are very fortunate to have you, very fortunate to be with you and work with you. And uh, on behalf of the district, we just thank you for everything you've done. I appreciate it. because he is teaching a course for Project Lead the Way for students all across the U.S. tonight, so he has to leave early to teach his class. So de dedication at his final, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on with some of our other recognitions this evening, I'd like to start off with the Energizer Bunny Award. This award is given to a staff member or volunteer who keeps all on going. It is uh, sponsored by Bayview Financials, who are here this evening, Mr. Chip Brittingham and Mr. Wayne Humphreys, if they could please come forward. And 
also like to um, say that this award is being presented to Mr. Demby. If he would please come forward. And typically for this, we have one person who would recommend or nominate, which Mr. Pinder did start the ball rolling. But really, this is on behalf of everyone at the central office. And um, I could continue to read. There's pages and pages, and I'm actually going to give Mr. Demby um, all of the comments that were made, but I won't read them all this evening because we would be here for a very, very long time. <laughs> but so I just want to read a little bit about Mr. Demby. So the September Energizer Buzzy Bunny Award is being presented to Mr. Demby, our custodian here at Central Office. Mr. Demby is the definition of an Energizer Bunny. He literally does it all and he is the ultimate team player. Instead of the traditional nomination, we, as I said, have gathered today some words from our Central Office staff that we would happily share with you. So from Bridget Passan. Mr. Denby's arrival into my office always brightens my day. He always has a joke or words of encouragement, and he always seems to know which one I need at that most moment. I am so grateful for Mr. Denby for his hard work, for his kindness, and for his humor. And from Sarah Haas in HR, in addition to being an extremely hard worker who always goes above and beyond, Mr. Denby is a ray of sunshine and always has a positive and upbeat attitude. You can't be in a bad mood when, he, when you are in his presence, and he is more than deserving of this award. And I'll do one more. Mr. Denby is very hardworking, and I love seeing his smiling face every day. His smile is contagious, and when, it's, when, when he isn't working, it's just not the same. He goes above and beyond and has even taken me to get my car at Western Auto, so he probably knows who this is, so that I didn't have to walk. But the one thing that's most interesting about Mr. Denby is he rides a really cool motorcycle, <laughs> Gene Caldwell. So there's many, many more, and I do have a copy here for you, but thank you so much. I, I again, with all those other comments, every time you come in my office, always a bright smile, always welcoming, encouraging, and we just love having you here. You're just amazing, and thank you for all of your dedication. And The next award is the Shining Star Award. This award recognizes someone in our school system who shines. The September Shining Star Award goes to Mrs. Katie Kersey. Corsi. If she'll please come forward, and I know that her principal's here as well. She can come forward, and all of her support systems, please come forward. She was recommended by Miss Amy Smith, who is our supervisor of K-12 mathematics and gifted and talented instruction. Ms. Corsi is a member of the team that is always willing to um, help teachers, and especially the math team. She is creative and develops resources to support instructional engagement for students in the curriculum, as well as provides support and directions for teachers in implementing the new curriculum resources. She is a valued member of the mathematics team. Ms. Corsi develops engaging resources for the professional development across all elementary schools and supports the other specialists with resources that provide differentiation for teachers during training. Ms. Corsi is a valued member of the team and is one of the most encouraging and supportive members for all other specialists. She is full of energy and positivity every single day. We are grateful for Ms. Corsi's dedication to Centerville Elementary School and to Queen Anne's County Mathematics Department. Ms. Corsi truly is a shining star.
Moving on, uh, board involvement. Ms. Harper, you want to? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, welcome back to school. I'm so grateful to have a, a good, well, opening. Um, hoping everyone has a successful and safe school year. I won't say happy, that's a little ambitious, but at least successful and safe. So thank you very much. Yeah, I wanna welcome everybody back. Um, on the 18th, we got to welcome our new teachers. Um, very interesting morning that morning. Uh, a lot of new teachers, a lot of diverse backgrounds and a good percentage came through Queen Anne's County Public Schools. So I think that speaks well for our, our system. And then the following week on the 23rd, we had all our teachers at a thing. It was very informative. And I really saw a lot of smiling faces. I mean, we're really back for the first time in full swing face to face seeing people. I know our board members probably are back in school when they like it. And it's just, it's different, but it's fun. And uh, I think we'll be off to a good start this year. Yeah, it sounds like the uh, kickoff went well and the return back to school. I know uh, all my Boy Scouts are very happy to be back in class. And um, so good job to everybody to put putting that together. And uh, welcome back. Well, I'll add my welcome to that. Um, I also went to the new teacher orientation. As Dick mentioned, I mean, 24% of our new teachers are Queen Anne's County grads. So we've got some quality teaching coming in right now, which is awesome. Not that we didn't have some, but now we've got our, our returning people. Um, we also went to the kickoff event. It was really, oh, it was such good energy. The new teacher orientation was great energy, but um, so was the kickoff event. And Sheriff Hoffman was there, which um, same really, really good information about school safety um, that just reassured everybody, as we all know, he was able to get um, five new SROs. So, you know, going into this new year, really optimistic and just um, good relationships with um, the Sheriff's Department, which is awesome. Um, I did attend the meet and greet at Ken Island High School, and um, mostly I met and greet Mr. Kenna <laughs> because he, we, we spent a lot of time talking, but it was nice. He poured these um, upcoming ninth graders looked quite um, deer in the headlight a little bit, but um, I'm sure that he uh, made it, the transition good. Um, first days of school, I went to a few of them, and I have to say, I if it's okay to say this, my favorite was Mattapique Middle School. I loved all their little new Happy New Year hats. And just, you know, the teachers out there with their little flyers saying what their, what their name was for these sixth, sixth graders who weren't really sure where to go. And if you needed a schedule, it was out there. So it was fantastic. I mean, really fun things to do. And I also want to put a shout out to Ken Island High School. They are selling their fundraisers for their um, sports programs. It's only $20. Is that right, Makai? Do you know? Is it yes, $20? $20. Um, some good discounts for your local businesses. So welcome. And I'm excited um, for this year. Student board members, Mr. Johnson. Good evening, everyone. My name is Makai Johnson. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a senior at Canada High School. Uh, as everyone else said, the 2022-2023 school year kicked off to a great start, starting with the freshman orientation at Canada High School. It was a great success. In fact, I, I actually believe personally that it was a great benefit to the freshmen at the orientation. They were uh, persuaded to get involved in clubs and sports, and actually encouraged to establish new clubs if there weren't one, if weren't any that they were uh, interested in. Um, in other news, outdoor sports have temporarily been put on a hold due to the track replacement. However, we are excited for our new track, and hopefully by the end of the month, we will have a new track, and our first home game will be at home. Um, this year, actually, we will actually be honoring staff members that have been teaching at Ken Island High School since the doors first opened, which was about 25 years ago. They will be known as the original six. I'm not yet sure how we'll be honor honoring them, but we'll go about it in some, some way. The teachers are Nancy Abbott, Linda Kepley, Marcy Mamos, Debbie Parsons, Rebecca Ritz, and Brian Sufinowski. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's practically all, all that I right. have right now. Can I awesome. add one Thank thing you. to Makai? You talked about the new groups. I don't know, Mr. Ken, if we still need this, but I do know I'm putting a plug out there that there was a lot of equestrian students at, at Ken Island High School, is that correct? And they're looking for an equestrian advisor. So if anybody's watching or anybody knows anybody, um, they would love to have an advisor and get that club um, back up and running again. So. Okay. Thank you, oh. Makai. Hello, everybody. My name is Austin Toole. I'm the student representative from Queen Anne's County High School. 
Um, so in our past news, our orientation and our kickoff to our year was a great success. We're all excited to get back. Uh, the seniors actually had a senior breakfast the first day of school. It was a great turnout. Um, this past week, class president elections are currently under the way. Uh, congrats to Trey Brown for winning the senior class president. Um, for sports, football, boys soccer, and field hockey stand undefeated. Uh, football beating North Carolina, field hockey beating St. Michael's, and boys soccer beating Y High. Uh, it's always exciting to say undefeated right off the <laughs> get-go. They've played one game, so. <laughs> Um, so this next week is our homecoming week. So um, the Spirit Week, we have Maryland Monday, Galaxy Tuesday, Class Color Wednesday, Tropical Thursday, and School Spirit Friday. Um, Powder Puff will be Wednesday, September 14th at 5.30 p.m. Pe the Pep Rally Friday, September 16th at 1 p.m. Uh, the Dance will be that Friday at 6 p.m. And the Parade at 10 a.m. with kickoff at 12 p.m. on that Saturday. Um, so one last thing, interim reports will be sent home ele electronically on Friday, September 30th, halfway through the first marking period. So <laughs> it's really close, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Dr. Salins? Yes, I just have um, two things. One, um, I just want to give a huge shout out to all staff members because really we did have an amazing um, kickoff for the new year nice and tiered in over three days and it's not possible without amazing staff members so i just say kudos and thank you to everyone that worked so diligently from getting buildings ready to transportation food service to our um, teachers our support system as well um, and then the second thing i want to give a shout out um, on this weekend this september 10th we do the kickoff for queen Anne's county goes purple and thank you to Julie and all of her efforts with that to not only um, notice our artwork here, I don't know how many of you can see that um, from students' artwork um, to building awareness for Queen Anne's County Goes Purple for opioid crisis that we've been in for many, many years, but also the purple efforts here in, in our, in our um, boardroom right now. So um, I encourage everyone to join. Um, Dr. Sprankle will be there um, on behalf of the system to speak and there'll be lots of activities. We have some students who will be performing. We have booths and things to gather more information. And so I just encourage you to come out in support of Queen Anne's County Goes Purple. Okay, thank you. Dr. Sprankle. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team members. It is my pleasure to present the August Spotlight. Boy, oh boy, we got started on a great, great start this school year. And I'll just tell you, it's just exciting to be able to talk about some of the excitement today. Many um, have already commented on opening but now I get to go into it a little bit more to show some of those smiling faces and some of the activities also that we actually completed in Queen Anne's County Public Schools last month. So here we go. First day of kindergarten and pre-K. Look at these little smiling faces. Everybody was happy to get started in pre-K and kindergarten. You can see we have one of our smiling faces, a little girl just walking up there excited about skipping to school and skipping into the building. You can see that our students are at their centers. They're learning um, with their Play-Doh. They're at their centers with Play-Doh. They also have block cent um, center time. They're working with their fine motor skills, developing language and learning how to collaborate, to co work together collaboratively. So we were excited about that. So there we go with our pre-K and first grade, uh, pre-K and kindergarten students, excuse me. We have a nice welcome back here and returning staff filled with excitement and welcome students back. Mattapeak Middle School celebrated the new school year with happy new year headgear. I think Ms. Bennett mentioned that earlier today, including the principal of the school, Dr. McCoy, had her headgear on as well. So that was exciting to walk into Mattapique Middle School and see the headgear welcoming in the new year. So that was exciting. 
Next, we have Dr. Schreckengoff welcoming her students at Stevensville Middle School with a smile, as you can see, and standing in the background and looking on is uh, Ms. Bennett, board member, as well as some of our executive team members. And I'll just tell you, it was just really, really nice. The Churchill mascot greeted students as they arrived with a friendly smile. Here we have Dr. Salings welcoming students at Centerville Elementary School with a smile. She was also caught cheering at Graysonville Elementary School during the back to school assembly. So we, th we thank Mrs. Tubman as well as Ms. Rhodes for actually facilitating the back to school assembly at Graysonville Elementary School. Here again, Ms. Bennett shared in the student and staff excitement, joining the executive team on several school visits. So thank you so much, Ms. Bennett. Our amazing partnership with the Maryland State Police and the Queen Anne's County Office of the Sheriff, um, I'll tell you, they have been busy, especially the Sheriff's Office has been extremely busy with directing bus traffic in the morning. I've gotten caught up in that little catch in, right before Queen Anne's County um, High School. They've also been visible at our schools, and so we appreciate our partnerships with the Maryland State Police as well as the Sheriff's Office. Thank you so much, partners. Our bus drivers welcome their students, and I say their students, back because they had smiling faces, and it's just always great to see our bus drivers starting our students off on the right foot. So thank you, bus drivers, for all that you do. Board members, we'd like to thank you so much for supporting our fifth through eighth grade students receiving the Chromebooks for all of our students in grades five through eight. So they walk back to new, walk back in to new devices and thank you so much for supporting that effort. So thank you so much. Also a big shout out to ComTech for getting all of those Chromebooks ready. We wanna thank ComTech for working so hard as well. New teacher orientation was phenomenal. I will tell you we had a wonderful time welcoming in our teachers, our new teachers, Lots and lots of smiling faces as well. We took a wonderful bus tour. We had a Southern County tour and a Northern County tour. And Dr. Salins and I had the opportunity to ride on separate buses, had a chance to engage with a lot of our new teachers. And they were excited about the bus tour. I mean, it was a big hit. So I, I wanna thank whoever came up with that idea of the bus tour because it was definitely a winner. It's something we wanna keep in mind for next school year. Hopefully we won't have a large turnover, but when we have new teachers, we do want to give them the bus tour. You can see a picture there. We took a picture there and Mr. Tolley actually used the drone to take the picture. So this picture there and also a special thank you to our board members, President Smith, also Ms. Bennett, also Ms. Bent, and um, our commissioner and Sheriff Hoffman for attending our staff kickoff. Thank you so much. We had a wonderful kickoff, and I'll tell you, Sheriff Hoffman delivered a very powerful speech um, in helping us to keep our schools safe, and it was just tremendous, all of the information that he provided us on kickoff day. So thank you so much, Sheriff Hoffman. Professional development. We had a wide variety of professional de development that was offered to our returning teachers that included some of our community business partners, such as Truist Bank and WCEI radio station in Easton. Some of our outstanding dynamic presenters were Peter Pachucci, executive director of the Carroll Casino Fund, who provided outstanding movement professional development for our performing arts teacher. And I'll tell you, he came pro bono, free, pro bono. So, but our teachers received quality professional development. Uh, a, another presenter, Graham Heffern, co-founder of the CEI Quaver, music flew in from London. Again, pro bono, no cost to Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And so 
kudos to Mr. Bell for making those arrangements to provide our teachers with some rich, rich professional development. And we have other supervisors who also provided rich professional development as well. <coughs> Just a reminder that our art teachers artwork will be showcased this coming Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Queen Anne's County Center for the Arts. So if you have a moment or an opportunity, please stop by to see our teacher's artwork for sure. And here are our Queen Anne's County Fair backpack winners. We had four winners and you can see Dr. Salins is pictured with one of our winners. And so they were happy to receive their backpack. So that was great. And last but surely not, le not least, Sodexo launches at Foodie Cafe. We're ex excited about the Foodie Cafe because the Foodie Cafe offers a wide variety of healthy choices. So our students are able to select healthy choices for, for lunches, so we're excited about that. And that is our August Spotlight, and thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Anybody signed up for public comment? Well, I'll read it anyway. For citizen participation, we ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which this board has authority. Comments about actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or board president. If you have a specific question, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and, and right to convey your message freely, but as a courtesy to this board and our citizens to show respect for all. At this time, Mr. Smith, there is no one signed up. Okay, do I have anybody in order who would like to speak? Hearing none, we'll move on. Okay, uh, expenditure report, Ms. Towers. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salem's board members, executive team. My name is Jane Towers, CFO. Tonight we're bringing before you the expenditure budget, detailed and in summary, for your review and any questions that you may have. One item of note that this is the approved budget that was booked in March. There is going to be a budget amendment coming um, later on. Uh, next month. Significant. I'm sorry. And a significant amount? Yes. Because this right now is showing us 64% has already been allocated. A lot of that is in salaries. Yes. Mm -hmm. Salary related. Okay. Yes. Salaries are spread out already, already through the year. Exactly. They're already right. encumbered for the year. Mm -hmm. But okay. there were some um, reclassifications of job um, duties that we'll go ahead and um, allocate and break down even further. An example would be your um, assistant principals at the four elementary schools. You'll see that under um, the level admin. So there'll be a budget amendment that gets placed in there as well. And the other thing we've talked about it, we know in our budget, fuel cost are going to be an issue that we want to stay on a, at least a quarterly basis to find out where we're going to be because things aren't trending in the right direction on that one. Any other questions by the board? Yeah. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, if anybody's had a ch we're not going to do break. Everybody's had a chance. <laughs> Everybody's tired yet, all right? Darn. Uh, plus, I'm under pressure to get the um, human resources. Everybody had a chance? We looked at our human resource report. Do have a motion? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the human resources and substitute, substitute bus driver report as reported in closed session? Second. A motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Dr. Salins. Um, yes. I, um, actually, thank you for approving that report. In doing so, you have uh, approved two new positions here in the district that have been filled. And I'd like to, first of all, um, congratulate and invite up Mr. Joe Sabori. Uh, Joe comes to us with uh, many, many years of experience in law enforcement and will be our new coordinator of school safety and security. Um, we're really happy to have him. We're happy to have his experience here, his presence, 
his students are in our buildings. So he has an extra special vested interest, um, but just his overall experience level that he brings to the table, um, I don't know that we could find a more top-notch person. And I'm so excited for this opportunity. This is a position that is well needed in the district, um, will well be served as we increase our school resource officers, um, as we continue to work um, in partnership with our local authorities to improve the safety of every building for the benefit of our student and staff members. So I'd like you to congratulate um, and, yeah. and welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you very much. That'll be our pass for Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. 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 Joseph Pickenfeld, Deputy Director for the Maryland Center for School Safety. I'm also the regional rep there, which includes Phoenix County, Anne Arundel, Kent, and Carolina County. So Joe and I have been working a lot together, just like Sid and I have. And it's top notch here to go. Big shoot to Phil. I'm just trying to get one of those energizer buttons. No, I, <laughs> I just wanted to say that, you know, we are truly fortunate to have somebody of Joe's, uh, you know, level. Um, he was really crucial in us developing our emergency plans uh, prior to COVID. He did a lot of training for us, and then it's nice to have it come full, full circle and for you to come back uh, to us. So your office is ready, right across from mine. So great. Looking forward to it. You can't get that far away. <laughs> that you approve this evening is Mrs. Angela Gebert. She is the new early learning facilitator. I'd like for her to come forward. Thank you for us with many, many years of experience. We won't show that just because we are just about the same age and have the same level of experience. But, um, but no, Angela comes to us with uh, specifically an expertise in accreditation for pre-K schools and the pre-K expansion. And so she is going to be a welcome addition to that department in helping us to continue to not only expand our our pre-K, but also to meet the, the what we need to meet, meet for the blueprint. Um, and I just welcome her ex level of experience. She's a true team player, and we're just so happy to have you here. So welcome, welcome. Thank you. 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 Okay, next will be 902, Mr. Evans. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, members of the board executive team. For the record, my name is Matt Evans, Supervisor of Student Services. I have before you tonight um, a request for approval of the renewal of the Naviance license for our career uh, development and exploration, uh, career and college development and exploration. Also, this platform is used by the high school counselors when they're submitting all documents and applications to colleges, and it's, it also provides us data on um, through alumni tracker on graduates post secondary enrollment. This is the fifth year of the five year contract, so after this year we would be able to renegotiate um, or look elsewhere. Okay, do you have any questions by board? Entertain a motion. I have a motion, sir, to uh, purchase an Aviance license. A fiscal impact dollar amount of $43,954.61. Budget source, the FY23 unrestricted budget under guidance software. Second. A motion is second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. Savvy. Thank you. Thank you, yes, sir. Yeah. Go Tigers. <laughs> Mr. Tolley. Good 
Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, and executive team. For the record, my name is Adam Tolley. I am supervisor of career technical education and social studies. It's been a while since I've been up here, so it's a pleasure to be here. I'm here tonight to ask approval for the purchase of a new uh, vehicle alignment machine for our automotive program at Queen Anne's County High School. Um, as you see in, in the proposal, this machine is over 15 years old. It was purchased uh, in 2007. It is um, severely out of date. We were unable to update the, the machine with the software that we have. It's running on Windows <clears throat> XP, which has been out of date for many years. It has a CD to update, and we are just unable to update it. Um, without this piece of equipment, uh, we are not able to certify our program with, with ASE, which is our accrediting uh, body, and then there Therefore, we would be unable to use it for certification for our students. So it is, uh, it is a it is a large cost. But again, this it's over 15 years old, and it is a much needed piece of equipment for our program. And when our students pay, go through this program, and they can go, I mean, then they can write to a facility repair facility with a certificate to help get a job and from ASC, which is the the national industry recognized automotive. Uh, credential or so okay. absolutely and and we you know I'm proud to say is as, as always we pay for the certifications for all of our students so our students go in we pay for these certifications for them and then they are able as soon as they come out to go into any um, to any industry automotive industry or doesn't even have to be automotive you know to to start the in the career field so this um, Ms. Bent was very passionate about getting this done and, and I have and if she was here she would tell you how grateful she is as we all are, because CT is so important to the board, as all of our programs are, but she would definitely be thanking you for making this happen. Thank you. Okay, any other Smith, questions? Smith, may I make a motion to purchase the new alignment machine for the automotive technology program at Queen Anne's County High School? Fiscal impact dollar amount of $34,114.85. Budget source is the FY22 year end fund. Second. A motion a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, our next is our cafeteria. Uh, Ms. Hickey and Ms. Pollan. President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, and executive team. For the record, I'm Julie Hickey, coordinator of food service. And I'm Carla Poulin, facilities planner. And we come before you tonight with one item for action, um, and that would be for the approval of a contract with Vigil Contracting for the renovation of the cafeteria serving lines at Bayside Elementary School, as well as the replacement of the condensers and evaporators um, in the walk-in refrigerator and freezer at Bayside Elementary School. Um, that contract would include um, the demolition of the existing cafeteria lines um, and the purchase of all of the new equipment for the new cafeteria lines, meaning the melt coolers, hot and cold serving wells. Um, they would be putting on new um, sneeze guards, some decorative lighting, LED lighting, just to give the lines a more attractive look. Um, it would also replace the cold and hot pass-throughs on both of the serving lines, as well as a new cashier station. Um, that contract would also include the removal and the, of the existing condensers and evaporators in the walk-in refrigerator and freezer, um, and the purchase of new ones, the installation of those um, condensers and evaporators, as well as new refrigerator and freezer doors um, properly sealed to maintain temperatures. Three questions. When will this take place? Mm -hmm. our, our hope would be, depending on the length of time, that we would do it over um, the break, the Christmas break. Secondly, what is, I see here it's food service fund balance. <coughs> How much is in, in that balance? Will it cover this? It's, it, yes. It's um, it, it allocated. Will, it will cover it. Um, we're in the process of closing our audit financial statements, but there is an in fund balance carryover from last year in, in 22 or in 21 to 16. Yes. And three, we couldn't get this done over the summer, so we couldn't interfere with winter break. I mean, it just didn't come up. Okay. That's fine. That's all I got. And, and if it's not able to be done over the Christmas break, what we will do is, you know, Bayside has two identical lines. Yes. We can go ahead and we will, you know, remove one line, keep one open, and replace them, you know, <clears throat> back 
at different times so that we would not disrupt meal service. Okay. And I just firm fixed. It's a firm fixed price. Yes. Yeah. I know we have a lot of schools, and this is an ongoing issue. We, I know, probably not where everybody wants to be, but I, this is our this is where we need it to go right now. This is one of the oldest kitchens. The equipment that's in there and the serving lines are 30 years old. I mean, I mean things, you know, because when we start talking about Kellen High School, we, you start telling me 25 years, and I can remember when we built it. You know what I mean? It's just right. it just time goes by pretty quickly. Well, Bayside was 1991, so right. yes, it's definitely overdue. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions by the board? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve <clears throat> the request for the funds to do the cafe serving line and remove and replace all the walk-in refrigerator condensing units with Guardian, Guardian Source Well Vigil Contracting Fiscal Impact Dollar Amount of $212,542.17. Budget Source is the Food Service Fund Balance. Second. A motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> You're still here? I'm going to stay with you for a few more. Okay. <laughs> so the first item I have for you this evening is to ask your approval for a contract with Flynn Mid-Atlantic to provide the partial roof replacement at Ken Island High School. So this is approximately 85,000 square feet. It's a 22 year old roof, low slope modified. We are working with Flynn under a competitive bid process. So in the packet, you will see that we did put this out to bid. There's a bid tabulation for you, as well as two requests to move some funding from both the state and county reserves to assure that we have enough to complete this project. The contract price is $1,069,495. We are adding a 5% contingency request to that just in case we come across unforeseen conditions. And this is coming out of prior capital budget requests. So it is budgeted for. In clarification, you said high school, but these are the I'm reserves sorry. from the high school yes. that we couldn't do that Correct. we're not putting into two different projects, one of them being the elementary school. Thank you for yeah. the clarification. Yeah. With the 5% contingency, because it would be over the 25,000, will it still come back if you need it or will? Yes, if there was anything over 25,000, we would bring it to your attention. The hope is that we won't have any unforeseen conditions and we won't need to use it. Any further questions? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the contract uh, with Flynn Mid-Atlantic for the partial roof replacement, replacement of Ken Allen Elementary School, fiscal impact dollar amount of $1,122,970,000, budget source FY22 and 23 budget, capital budget. Second. And motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The second item for you this evening is the 80. contract. <laughs> <laughs> The second is the contract approval for the partial roof replacement at Bayside Elementary School. This was also a competitive bid process and the low bidder was Rain Tree Services. This is replacement of the standing seam metal roof at Bayside Elementary. It's approximately 23,000 square feet. It is a 28 year old roof. Again, we are asking a 5% contingency for unforeseen conditions. The contract price is $1,056,450. And this was also reserve funds from the capital budget. We will be utilizing some of the same Kent Island High School roofing funds that we had asked to be placed into reserve. You will see in your packet again, there are letters that indicate we would like to have those funds transferred to both the state and county, and those are currently in process with those entities. And, these, and it, the work will be done when? We are leaving the schedule as flexible as possible to allow the contractor to work when they are able to do so. If we have the weather that will allow us to do it this fall, we will try and get some of the work done this fall. If we have a moderate winter, we may be able to do a little bit over the winter. The hope is that we get all the materials on site now to avoid any cost overruns. And then if the work has to be done next spring or even into next summer, we can accommodate that. This, this is over a non-instructional. Yes, so. A little easier to do a renovation um, and not disruptive to the instructional process. Yes, so Bayside Elementary School is over the public areas. That would allow us a little bit more flexibility to work 
at times that school is in session. Ken Island Elementary School, a little bit trickier because it is over some of the classroom areas, so we'll be working very closely with the administration at the building to make sure that we are accommodating all of their needs. It's, uh, it's something we've done before. We've, we've done it at Churchill and Summersville Elementary School, and we're successful with it. And I've asked you this question before. The people that are working on this project are vented. Yes. And make sure that they're properly, since they're on school property during school. When Comar requires for them to go through a uh, check to make sure that they're valid. Yep. They maintain background checks on their employees that are on school site. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the contract with Rain Tree Services for the partial roof replacement of Bayside Elementary School and the fiscal impact dollar amount of $1,109,273. Budget source FY22 and 23 capital budget. Second. A motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. The third request this evening is your approval <laughs> to purchase new student furniture at Queen Anne's County High School. So utilizing a cooperative purchasing contract, the Mid-Atlantic Purchasing Team, we are hoping to replace chairs, desks, science tables, stools, and art tables. This is going to allow the teachers and the administration some flexibility to be able to reconfigure room layouts. In the event that we require additional social distancing, this will give them greater flexibility than they have with their current seating. We hope that this will be the first of several phases to replace the furniture throughout the school. Please note, this is a 16 week lead time as we have seen with all of our furniture requests. So our hope is that we would get this here and possibly over the holiday break, be able to get the new furniture in place. If not, we will be looking with the administrative team to be able to phase that installation in when the product arrives. The cost implication, $396,147.32. This is coming from ESSER 2. Just a quick question about the ESSER 2 money. It's, even if it, we don't get to it right away because it's earmarked, we don't, because ESSER 2 is up until when? Um, ESSER 2 is next uh, September. Okay. Next September. Okay. <clears throat> and this is one of three phases for the school, so yes, we would like to do total dollars, replacement. About the same sliver. It's covered of, uh, under ESSER funds mm -hmm. social for, this, for social distancing. Thank you. Any Mr. other Smith, questions? May I make a motion to approve the purchase of new student furniture for Queen Anne's County High School with the Duran Company? Fiscal impact dollar amount of $396,147.32. Budget source ESSER 2 funds. Second. A motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, ayes have it. And you see Principal Shrek and Gosh is here and <laughs> Billy Bryce for, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Allah. I know it's not proper protocol, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for you, Mr. Shrek. <laughs> Most of that furniture was purchased in 1956. So. Hey, Sid, I remember it. Let's take it easy. All right, sorry. <laughs> He's got his name on a couple of chairs. Yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I have one with my name on it? <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, thank you. Dr. Thanks. Kibler. <laughs> Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board, board members and executive team, Dr. Matt Kibler, Director of Accountability. I'm not here to ask for money. I, all that, so. Yay. <laughs> I am here to uh, seek approval tonight um, for the Code of Ethics and Conflict of in Interest Policy, Policy 104. Again, this is um, uh, just updating the policy that, that you all approved back um, in May or June, I believe, and we asked, um, we wanted to add staggered terms to the three uh, members, um, so that's what we're doing tonight. Yeah, I There's been no comments. Yeah, we discussed that, that so we have a three panel, so they'll be pointed for three years. Exactly. On Now it'll be one, two, three, and then Correct, and I I, add, I did add an extra line as well in here that if, if somebody would have to be removed during their term, sure. that whoever the replacement would fill out that term just to keep it keep it staggered. I think that's good because I think it gives us two or three aren't gonna go all out at once. Exactly. Because you need some history on some of this stuff. Board, have any further questions? Well, thank you for not asking for any money because we gave it all to Ms. Pullen. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to um, approve the Code of Ethics and Conflict of Interest Policy number 104. 
Second. second. Oh, sorry. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have uh, any citizen comments? Does anybody in the audience have any comments or things? Okay, our next work session will be September the 21st of this year, and our next board meeting will be October the 5th. Any other board members have anything? Thank you all. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Thank aye. you. Good night.